right, if the um, clerk can please read the verdict. In the circuit court of the 17th Judicial Circuit in and for Broward County, Florida, State of Florida, Eric David, I'm sorry, Eric David Robinson defendant, case number 17-11373, CF 10A, Judge Bernard Bo Bover, verdict. We, the jury, finds as follows to the defendant, Eric David Robinson, in this case. The defendant is guilty of murder in the second degree as charged in the information. If you find the defendant guilty of any of the crimes listed above, you must answer the following questions. During the course of the crime committed, did the defendant, Eric David Robinson, actually carry, display, or use a weapon? Yes. So we say all this first day of May 2023 at Fort Lauderdale, Broward County. All right, let's uh, poll the jury. If you, do you have their uh, notebook numbers? Let's go by that. Or I do not. Have you do not. Numbers. Do you know which ones were returned to you? It was tossed. Seven was returned to me. And I think we were talking about that one because he keeps the, the books now. All right, uh, let's go by number and the one that doesn't answer we know that's the one that was excused yes, yes. So you go, by go by go just go by juror numbers we're gonna go by notebook numbers all right okay. go ahead juror number one is this your verdict okay juror number two is this your verdict yes juror number three is this your verdict yes juror number four is this your verdict yes juror number five is this your verdict okay juror number six is this your verdict yes Juror number seven, is this your verdict? And juror number eight, is this your verdict? Yes. Okay, all six jurors have uh, answered in the affirmative. The two uh, numbers that weren't answered to, the five and the seven, were the two alternates that were excused. Uh, do we have, uh, uh, you, you have their phones, correct? Okay. Uh, uh, when I excuse them, you can take it in the back and just hand, hand them the phones there. Um, I do have certificates of appreciation. If we can trade these for their juror badges, because we do recycle those. Okay, uh, uh, he'll pass them out to you, those certificates, when you uh, get your phones back, okay? One last thing before I do discharge you, I do have an instruction to read to you. The instruction reads as follows. Members of the jury, I wish to thank you for your time and consideration of this case. I also wish to advise you of s some very special privileges enjoyed by jurors. No juror can ever be required to talk about the discussions that occurred in the jury room, except by court order. For centuries, our society has relied upon juries for consideration of difficult cases. We have recognized for hundreds of years that a jury's deliberations, discussions, and votes should remain their private affair as long as they wish it. Therefore, the law gives you a unique privilege not to speak about the jury's work. Although you are at liberty to speak with anyone about your deliberations, you're also at liberty to refuse to speak to anyone. A request to discuss either your verdict or your deliberations may come from those who are simply curious, from those who might seek to find fault with you, from the media, from the attorneys, or elsewhere. It will be up to you to decide whether to preserve your privacy as a juror. The bottom line is this, all those restrictions that I put upon you earlier are now lifted. You're free to speak to anyone that you want to. You're also free not to speak to anyone and to maintain your privacy. And I'll leave that decision up to each of you individually. 
Again, uh, I thank you for your time and effort expended on this case. I know you took your responsibility very seriously, and I do thank you for that. At this time, uh, you are uh, discharged from your duties as jurors. The deputy will take you out back and return uh, your, your devices to you and give you those certificates. And again, I thank you for your efforts on this case. This time, you may follow the deputy. All right, so after one hour and six minutes or so, this jury comes back with a guilty verdict on second-degree murder. They, they were given a charge on the manslaughter, just in case to cover a heat of passion type situation, but I didn't think that at all, that that applied to this case. He was no, either gonna agree. be guilty or not guilty on this, on this murder charge. Your thoughts on this, Judge? I mean, it's, you know, an hour and six minutes. I mean, that's that quick. is, I mean, that's basically the times and let's go back in a court. I understand he's talking about sentencing day. This defendant faces a term sentence not exceeding life. And I understand, Michael, as they approach the bench that we don't have audio, we can go right back in if they do. But so I'm not surprised I, I, that it was a guilty verdict, a very quick one at that. But. I think at the end of the day, this means that they looked at the credibility mm -hmm. of the main witness, Isabella Tagliarini, and I think they decided they believed her and mm -hmm. what she said happened mm -hmm. and that he was responsible for it. Do you agree or disagree? You know, I, I, I can't say I fully agree. Okay. I think, I think the circumstances surrounding what happened here. Certainly, I think they had to have taken some of her testimony. I'm not, I'm not gonna sit here and say that they believed everything she said. I mean, it was clear from a cross-examination and what we found out about statements to police that this woman lied about a lot of things. Yes. No reason to think she might not have lied on the stand, but you had all these videos of the two of them together. And I'll go back to something that we talked about um, last week about this trial, that if this jury believes that the two of them were involved, that's still a guilty verdict for him. Yes. So that's even a good if point. they didn't believe her story, I think they were very much convinced that he was involved somehow. I think that was clear. Um, but I'm not sure that actually means they believed all of her story. Maybe they didn't believe all of her story, but I think they had to believe enough of it to believe that, to your point, yeah, he was involved, period. Mm -hmm. And I think the length of time they deliberated points it out clearly that. They didn't, they didn't have much of a decision to make from their perspective. Yeah, it was only, it was her, it was him, or it was the two of them together. Yes. Under two of Agreed. those circumstances, he's guilty, right? So the only one that he's not guilty if they believe she did it. And I think that was a, a, a bigger stretch, right, for them, not the least of, the, of which because she got a deal from prosecutors. And on some level, that's a bit concerning for a defense attorney because you get a deal, you bring it out in court, but at the end of the day, the prosecutors made a choice to give her a deal. A good deal. And so that means something to a jury. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. And so when they put her on the stand, that means something to a jury. Yeah. That's added and bolstered credibility. Yeah, I agree with you. And she really got a, a good deal compared to facing life. Good deal. I mean, right? A great deal. A I know. I deal. If you all could see Michael's face, you mm -hmm. know that he means no, a tremendous deal. Yes. I don't disagree yes, with no that. Doubt. I just want to remind again, murder in the second degree means that it is without premeditation. Yes. That's one of the elements of the crime and that it includes it's the unlawful killing of a human being when perpetrated by an act imminently dangerous to another. Here's my question for you. As I look at this case and we look at the facts as we heard them mm -hmm. in court, why, was he, why wasn't he charged with first degree murder? I think it's the premeditation piece that they were afraid a jury might not the jury might not find that it was premeditated because they can't say who planned it. Was it him or was it her? Maybe, I know premeditation. Exactly. It doesn't require second. planning in that sense. It doesn't sense. require planning. He walks planning. in the room, sees them in the bed together, makes a decision to do this. That's and premeditation. Premeditated. And then when you talk about the fact that there were no defensive wounds and that he didn't wake up, this likely happened while he was asleep, I was surprised they didn't charge him with first degree murder, considering the motive was the fact that he was having a relationship with the woman. He apparently, according to Tagliarini's testimony, walks in there in bed, holds her, tells her to get out. 
that's planning. Continues to be. And, and to your point, it would be, therefore, that he was planning to kill, which would be first degree. So, Absolutely. you know, that's a, that's a good question. I don't, and, and what's going on behind the scenes in terms of the negotiations, if any, between the defendant mm -hmm. and the state don't really know that. Now, it was just pointed out, and mm -hmm. I noticed when he was standing for the jury to come in, Michael, and the mm -hmm. camera was on him, he was... He had a smile on his face. I'm not saying he was smiling, but he had his face in the shape of a smile. Mm -hmm. Ever since the verdict, his demeanor has certainly changed. Yes. Not surprising. Mm -hmm. He's had different facial expressions. That smile has gone away. Uh, I, you know, you're a defense attorney by, by training, by experience. How do people deal with finding out there's a verdict and I'm, I'm, I'm now here? I'm mm -hmm. in jail. I am not getting out right now. Yeah, I, what I find is that it doesn't really hit them for a little bit. I think initially they understand the gravity of the situation, but it's not until later, maybe mm -hmm. that day, later, a couple days later, they're in the cell and they realize they're not getting out. Um, sometimes they have an acceptance because they know they did the crime. Yeah. Other times they have an acceptance because within themselves that's the only way they could deal with it. Because right. I've seen, like I've told you, I've seen cases where innocent men have sat there in perfect silence and you would never know. I've seen people kicking and screaming, going out of the courtroom saying, I didn't do this, you got it wrong. So, you know, it goes both ways. And I've seen people kicking and screaming where they did do it, quite frankly. Yeah. So, okay. you know, can Fair go enough. that way too. Fair enough. All right, so I think we do need to take a break. When we come back, of course, we're gonna continue all our coverage here. Stay tuned, Court TV.